cheat on that quiz. Instead, study with BC in 10 minutes. My video. Watch. Watch it. Alright, so here it is. Months of calculus BC learning in 10 minutes. I'm your host, Jack Mackins. A lot of energy, a lot of focus. We can do this. So I'm thinking you know AB, because if you don't know AB already, you're going to fail, just like Michael and John. So, BC, there are three main topics. One, polar parametric and vectors. Two, application of integrals. Three, series. None of them are related and don't make any sense together, but I'm going to try to teach you all of them in 10 minutes. Let's go. Alright, here we go. So all your functions in calculus A and B are x in terms of y or y in terms of x. In BC, you have to deal with this variable t. I don't know what t is. It really doesn't matter. The people on AP don't care. So y in terms of t, x in terms of t. Separate functions make the same graph. So all you need to know is how to derive it. To derive it, the dy dx is just dy over t, dx over t, and then you just divide. And that gives you dy dx. So we're going to use this function as an example. You derive it. dy equals dy dt is 3, dx dt is 12t, so dy dx is 3 over 12t. That's pretty simple. The second derivative gets a little more complicated. You take the derivative of the first derivative and divide it by dx dt. So here's the first derivative. We derive that the second time and get this. Then we take this and divide it by dx dt which is this. You simplify that out and you get negative 3 over t is d squared y over dx squared. For these functions, a lot of times, you have to find vertical tangents. Vertical tangents are when the bottom of a function is 0 or undefined. So to do that, you just take dx dt, set it equal to 0, and solve, and that's how you find vertical tangents. Horizontal tangents are dy dt, or when the function equals 0. So you just set dy dt to 0, and it's pretty simple. Um, there aren't any for this function because it's an easy function. Alright, so next we have polar functions, which have theta and r. r is the radius, so how long it's going to be, and then theta is the angle, so the degrees that it's going to be from the x-axis. It looks like there's a lot of trick in this, but you really don't have to know it. When you're deriving and integrating these functions, you just treat it the same way as parametrics, but theta is the t for these functions. And then x equals r cosine theta and y equals r cosine theta are the functions you use to convert it. And then the area is the only function you need to know for this. It's one half the integral from the starting theta limit to the ending theta limit of r theta squared d theta. And next we have vectors, which are related to parametrics. The first thing, it's like a point. The first thing you write x in terms of t, the second you write y in terms of t. To derive it, you just derive them separately and then write them in parentheses. And that's polar vectors and parametrics. All right, so your next big BT, BC topic is series. Series are pretty much a function in terms of an infinite sum of n as the variable. So geometric series, your basic series, it's your original term times your ratio r to the n. To find the sum, you just do your original term a over 1 minus the ratio r, and that's your sum. If it converges, r is less than 1. If it diverges, r is greater than 0. Next series is p series, which is 1 over n raised to a variable. If that variable is greater than 1, it converges. If it's less than 1, it diverges. Next is harmonic series, which is just one simple series, 1 over n. 1 over n expands out like this, and it's always going to diverge. All right, next type of series is like a harmonic series, but it's alternating. So you're going to have negative 1 raised to the n or the n plus 1 over n. So it's going to expand out like this, and then it's going to converge usually. There are some sets of n variables it's not going to converge for, so expand it out a little bit to see if it follows that general pattern. Next test is your comparison test. So if you have two series, a n and b n, if b n converges and a n is smaller than b n for all terms as it expands out, then a n is going to converge too. And the opposite is true, so if b n diverges and a n is greater than b n for all terms, then a n diverges as well. Next test, ratio test. It applies to all your intervals. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a to the n plus 1. You don't add 1 to the whole function, but whenever you see n in the function, you replace it with n plus 1 and distribute. Over just the normal function, a to the n, 
If the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of that function is greater than 1, it diverges. If it's less than 1, it converges. And if it equals 1, there's no conclusion. And you have to go try to find another test, and that sucks. All right, the integral test. If the function is the decreasing function, and the series a n and the integral of the function, they either both converge or diverge. So you're going to take the integral from 1 to infinity. You're going to use your improper integrals of the function. And then if you can find an answer, it converges. If you can't find an answer, it diverges. All right, so for all your series, everything in terms of n. There's this new series called power series. It's n in terms of x. You use a ratio test and find it in terms of x. And then you're going to get uh, inequality for x is less than or equal to 1. You'll get x plus n as a constant. That's your radius of conversion. Then you solve that, get your number, and that's your interval of conversion or your two answers. And you plug that back in to see if it's uh, later, greater than or equal to or just greater than. And that's how you do power series. So next is Taylor series. Here's the equation. The function is the derivative to the n plus 1 of constant times x minus your constant, which is the axis of rotation. 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, and that's the formula for how you find Taylor series. Alright, so the next big topic in BC is the application of integrals. Instead of just integrating stuff like you did in AB, you have to apply your integrals to real life situations. So you're going to get a lot of problems about the rates, and you have to get and find out how much they did. Those are pretty simple. You just integrate the log and find it out. The one new formula that applies to that in BC is arc length, which is the distance that uh, the curve has traveled before. It's actually, they have it for a normal function, a polar function, and a parametric function. You don't have to know it for vectors. The regular function, it's the integral from a to b, so your two bounds of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared, all with under the square root. For polar, it's the integral of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. And then for parametric, it is the integral of the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared dt. So this is mainly the equation that you're going to use for the application of integrals. Other things that you're going to use is just general problems that are similar to related rates from AB, but deal with integrals instead of derivatives. Last big BC topic, logistic growth, you use it to map populations, rates of water flow, money, economics, everything. Here's the main formula, y prime equals ky uh, times a minus y. Here's the formula that you're going to use, y equals a, which is the initial over 1 plus b e to the negative kt. The variables are the same in this, depending on what you get it. And you're either going to take it in this or convert it to this, or have this and have to convert it back and forth. And that's logistic growth, and that's calculus in 10 minutes. But I...